Would you believe me if I tell you that the mites on your face are causing these red, angry-looking bumps, also known as rosacea? Hi friends, I'm Chris and I'm a dermatology trainee working in the west of Scotland in the UK. And in this video, I'm going to dive straight into the topic rosacea. Specifically, we're going to cover what it is, how it looks like, as well as the various steps and treatments we can do to help prevent and manage this common skin condition. We are also going to touch on the things that you can do to help with your skin, as well as the various treatment options we have in dermatology in the UK. So, what on earth is rosacea? Well, this is a very common skin condition, predominantly affecting the middle age groups, as well as people with fair skin. We don't exactly know what causes this, but it is thought to be due to a combination of genes, environmental factors, as well as an overabundance of a type of mite, also known as the demodex mites. Now, these are small little creatures that love growing and crawling around the hair follicles, and it's actually present in every single one of us. However, in people with rosacea, it is thought that they are more sensitive to these mites, and thereby causing inflammation of the skin, leading to flushing and redness. Rosacea can also be triggered by a variety of things which I've listed uh, in this video. And the most common trigger that we see in our clinics is actually direct sunlight. And this is why we always advise our patients to wear sunscreen at all times to help prevent rosacea. There are of course other known triggers such as caffeine in your tea, coffee, alcohol, um, spicy food and even exercise. And it's actually really anything that makes your blood vessels beneath the skin dilate, causing the flushing and redness you see in rosacea. Now, I think it's important for us to classify the rosacea into various subtypes, as they can look quite different, and also the treatments for each subtype can be different as well. One of the commonest subtypes of rosacea is the erythematotelangiectatic rosacea, also known as the vascular rosacea. This can be quite a mouthful to pronounce, but essentially, patients present with flushing, redness of the face, and telangiectasia, which also means dilated blood vessels. Now, the flushing is usually temporary at the start, but as the rosacea worsens, it can become permanent. The other very common subtype of rosacea is the papillopustular rosacea, also known as the inflammatory rosacea. And in this subtype, patients get these angry looking red bumps, also known as papules, and pustules, which are essentially papules containing pus inside. Now, I think it is important for us to identify papillopustular variant of rosacea as they can look quite similar to acne vulgaris. And so you may ask, how do I actually tell the difference? Well, essentially, the triggers for rosacea don't necessarily exacerbate acne. The other important thing to note is that the lesions for rosacea typically affect the central face, so this would include the forehead, both cheeks, the nose, and the chin. And they typically spare the temples and the sides or the jawline of the face. Lastly, in rosacea, we don't normally get the white or black heads that you see in acne. And these are also known as comedomes, which are basically clogged up hair follicles. Now, the other two subtypes are not as common, but we do still see them uh, in our practice. One of them is called the ocular rosacea. And as the name suggests, ocular meaning eye, patients with this type of rosacea typically get eye symptoms such as burning, itching, and grittiness of the eyes. And if this is left unchecked and untreated, it can cause permanent scarring. And so it is important for you to seek help quite early on so that you can get the appropriate management. The last subtype is the Phymatus rosacea, also known as rhinophyma. Now this subtype is particularly difficult to treat and essentially means thickening and deformity of the skin, particularly affecting the nose. So your usual creams, gels, lotion and potions uh, that you use to treat rosacea probably wouldn't work for this subtype of rosacea and you may need more aggressive treatments like laser therapies and even surgery. So now you may ask, how do we treat rosacea? The important thing for any subtype of rosacea is to identify and potentially avoid or limit any triggers triggering rosacea. What I'll recommend is to keep a diary for anything that can exacerbate your rosacea and try to limit or cut down one trigger at a time. You don't have to be prescriptive about this because ultimately it is your quality of life we are talking about 
and it's all about weighing the pros and cons when it comes to avoiding things you may like. So for example, if your rosacea is triggered by eating spicy food and you just so happen to love spicy food and you eat spicy food every single time, um, it is probably quite difficult and even impossible for you to limit um, eating spicy food because it will just make you very miserable. So instead of avoiding things completely, you may wish to perhaps limit the amount of exposure and be more rigorous when it comes to your skincare regime. Another important thing you can do is to treat your skin as though it is super sensitive. Always, always remember to wear a good sunscreen as we know sunlight is the number one trigger for rosacea. Wearing sunscreen not only prevents rosacea, it also helps reduce the risk of skin cancer and slows down aging. Another tip is to use non-fragrance and non-comedogenic facial cleansers and moisturizers which help protect the skin barrier function. Try to find cleansers that are more acidic with a pH similar to the skin, so between 4 to 5, rather than harsh soaps which are more alkaline and can be quite irritating and traumatic to the skin. An example you can try is the CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser. Another important tip is to keep your skincare as simple as possible. Now, for patients who have sensitive skin who are more prone to getting acne and rosacea, I would advise against using toner because toner can actually strip off the essential oils and moisture in your skin, making it more inflamed. So for specific subtypes, like for example, the erythematotelangiectatic rosacea, other than the advice that I've given before, um, doctors in the UK can also prescribe a topical gel called Mavaso gel, which contains brimonidine 0.03%. Now, this is licensed and indicated for facial redness and flushing, um, and we typically advise patients to use once a day. The only issue with this gel is that it can cause rebound redness when it's stopped, and so it's often quite difficult when patients try to come off it. Another treatment that we can offer in the UK is an oral medication called propranolol, which helps to shrink down any dilated blood vessels. Now, as you can imagine, this is an oral tablet, so it can cause systemic side effects, such as slowing your heart rate down. And so this is something that we don't normally prescribe um, in the UK for rosacea, unless it is absolutely crucial. Also, if your facial redness is permanent, causing discomfort and psychological distress, sometimes we can think of laser treatments, for example, IPL and pulsed dye laser. The only thing is that I'm not exactly sure if these treatments are still available under the NHS, which is the National Health Service for those people living in the UK. As such, um, you may wish to consider going for these treatments privately, but make sure that you seek out a reputable and recognized um, healthcare professional who knows what they are doing. You may also wish to consider camouflage makeup with a green tinted base to help correct the redness and help even out the skin tone. Now, in the UK, there is a camouflage service provided by a charity called Changing Faces. And this is something that you can register either yourself or get your GP to refer you um, onwards to this service. And in this service, what they do is that they would look at your skin tone, uh, show you the products that they use, um, the different shades that would match your skin tone, as well as how to apply the products. Now, for people who are suffering from the papulopustular type of rosacea, we do have a variety of treatments available. For people who are suffering from mild to moderate symptoms, we can offer um, topical treatments in the first instance. And in the UK, there are three mainstay topical treatments uh, we offer. The first one is Ivermectin Cream, also known as Solantra, which uh, you can apply once a day to the affected areas for up to four months. The other treatment is metronidazole gel, also known as Rosex gel, which uh, you can apply twice daily for up to four months. And lastly, we have the azelic acid 15% cream with the brand name being called Venetia. And we often ask patients to apply to their face twice a day for up to six months. These treatments are typically prescribed by your healthcare professional in the UK, but I think you can get the azelic acid uh, treatments uh, over the counter through brands like the Ordinary, Potter's Choice, as well as uh, Naturia. Once the rosacea is more well controlled, 
you can then reduce the frequency down to once or twice a week as a form of maintenance therapy. If your symptoms are more severe, then we may consider a combination of oral antibiotic and the topical treatments. And the oral antibiotics include things like lamacycline and doxycycline. Now bear in mind, this is a prescription only medication. And so you may wish to speak to your healthcare professional like your GP or local dermatologist in your area to find out more. The aim of using antibiotics is more for the anti-inflammatory properties rather than antibacterial. And typically patients stay on the antibiotics for at least three months for it to actually work. Now, if the symptoms continue to be persistent despite topical and oral antibiotics, sometimes in dermatology, we offer low-dose isotretinoin, also known as roaccutane. Now, this is a treatment similar to that for acne, severe acne, in fact, but actually the dose used for rosacea is much lower than that used for acne. Now, as for people suffering from the Phimatus variant of rosacea, and the topical treatments and as well as the oral antibiotics, they won't work uh, because of the deformity and soft tissue swelling. In this case, sometimes we can refer you onwards to laser treatments as well as surgical interventions to help remove the excess soft tissue. And as far as I know, these services are still available in some health boards across the UK. So you may wish to speak to your local dermatologist to find out more. Now, for people who are suffering from eye symptoms or ocular rosacea, other than minimizing the aggravating factors like, for example, excessive central heating, excessive air conditioning, and even smoky environments, um, I think it is important for you to make sure that you keep your uh, eyelids as clean as possible. This means cleaning them with a cotton wool soaked in warm water. And if you get sticky bits uh, underneath your eyelids, you can wash them with using baby shampoo. Also, if your eyes get dry, you can buy over-the-counter uh, lubricating eye drops and try to go for the ones without preservatives to keep your eyes moisturized throughout the day. One thing that people don't realize is that sometimes medications can exacerbate eye dryness. So have a look at your regular medications, particularly if you are on a lot of regular medications, such as certain antidepressants and anti-anxiety medications, as they can sometimes exacerbate eye dryness. In dermatology, we sometimes use oral antibiotics um, to help dampen down inflammation, but if your eye symptoms are very bad and severe, we can refer to our ophthalmology colleagues in the eye clinic for their review as well. Now, before I close off this video, I just want to say that oftentimes we um, underestimate how distressing skin conditions can be for people. I know that it is not um, the same as, say, if someone suffers a stroke or a heart attack. Uh, rosacea is not life-threatening, but they can cause a huge impact on our daily um, activities and social life. Skin conditions can make you look and feel different from the people around you, and this ultimately can cause uh, you to lose confidence uh, in yourself and cause self-esteem issues. I just want to say that for anyone who is watching this video suffering from any skin condition, no matter how severe or mild it may be, um, and if you're suffering from this, um, please don't suffer this alone. Speak to someone about it and get help as soon as possible. There are tons of support groups online um, that can help uh, support you through this journey. I myself suffered from really bad severe acne and this had caused significant long-term scarring, which I still have to this day. And so I hope by doing these videos, um, I would empower you guys, including um, healthcare professionals, um, with the necessary tools and knowledge in tackling uh, these skin conditions at an early stage. I will also provide several links down in the description box below, which you may want to check out if you want to read out more about rosacea. And if you're interested to know more about skin conditions in general, do check out my video on keratosis pilaris, where I talk about another very common skin condition that pretty much almost everyone suffers from. Thank you for watching. See you later. Bye.